Hello, welcome back. It's another episode of Haggis. In this episode, I am going to be battling with the sheer levels of unobtainium when it comes to working with a VM Range Rover. There's ways around this stuff, but blimey. Anyway, if you like this kind of stuff, if you don't, can't turn it off. If you want to comment down below, you need to be on your computer. If you want to support the channel, then there's a PayPal me link thing down here. No obligation, you don't get nothing for it, but if I've helped you or made you laugh, or you just want to support the channel, then feel free. And I do thank every single one of you personally. And of course, if you want to contact me, Church House Classics, it's all one word at gmail.com. Um, I do respond. It might take me a couple of days because not every single day is a Gmail day, um, but I do respond. So just bear with me. Um, it might take a day or two to get a response back, but I will respond. Anyway, enjoy the video. <laughs> it's been a semi-productive afternoon. Six o'clock now. Um, handbrake. Yes, absolutely spot on. Uh, big C-clip about there um, that holds the cable onto the handbrake body. Nice big fat washer underneath it. However, however, left-hand drive handbrake cable part number is different from the right-hand drive part number, indicating there is a different handbrake cable. So I'm going to get one of those. They're only a few quid. It's not the end of the world. <clears throat> um, haven't really done anything else in here. Uh, I started to, uh, I diagnosed the cables. I think I mentioned that already. Um, I found um, out I've been a bit of an ass about the viscous fan. I thought it was fucked and of course there's no coolant in the system so it was just spinning. Um, there was no resistance at all on it. It was actually spinning with the, uh, the water pump pulley. Uh, so viscous fan is fine. I did manage to separate it from the water pump. It did take an incredible amount of um, effort basically putting it on the floor and you know without damaging I mean I'm I, I sacrificing the, the, the fan blades if anything because I've actually got another set of those in the barn uh, but it came off in the end so the viscous fan is now free bone dry of course um headlights all in looking nice adjusters all work found a new set of self-tapping screws oh this was fun so this is the uh, driver's side swivel housing um, and there was a drain plug in there which I could not get out. Look at that fella. Now that took some effort I can tell you now and the only way I managed to get it out in the end was by putting a, um, a, a Stilson on the top of it while putting giving it some effort it was trapped in the vice at the time and banging it as hard as I could so basically simulating an impact driver hitting it with a three pound hammer hitting my Stilson with a three pound hammer and it started to turn good effort however these so drag link and the uh, tie rod i cannot get these things undone i mean i've had so i've had these things glowing um, and i can't get that thread undone and you can see where i think it was was it this one it was this one i've actually bent the bar trying to undo it with the stilson i've actually bent the steering arm that's how tight that is in there so it ain't coming out so I'll give up on those. Um, I'll just get another pair. I mean, the bars are only about 10, 15 quid. I've only put like 15, 20 minutes or so into it. I didn't want to waste hours releasing these things uh, when new parts cost less than an hour of my time. Um, so it seems a shame, but the only thing I need to salvage is this. And what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'm going to run a cutting disc just down here and see if I can splay it open and release that piece out of them. Because obviously this becomes the sacrificial part because they're about £10 to replace that um, I want to keep. So I can get that sorted out tomorrow. Uh, it's supposed to be getting a delivery so I can finish these hubs off tomorrow as well. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, I don't know what else I've done really. It's really just been kind of going around trying to slacken things off and loosen things and get things, you know, where I want them to be and identifying the parts are unobtainium and Oh, it's a pain in the balls, it really is. But we're getting there. I mean, we're still on target as far as the cost and timescales and stuff are concerned. I need to clear off down to Devon on Sunday. I was rather hoping to have this done um, before then. Um, but uh, that's not going to happen. So I shall release this back to its customer middle of December. Um, everything should be done by then. Including the MOT. It's a bit wibbly, isn't it? Double check that. 
it's almost it's not it's almost like this ring isn't clamping it down tight enough soon fix that soon fix it well, that one is too power steering kerfuffle right so that's the pump that came off the car with the bracketry as it stands that's the pump i ordered in used part doesn't matter i always need these things on the shelf this is the bracket that i thought was unique to left hand drive however <laughs> when we tip this thing up on its nose and this one up on its nose we can see oh they're mirror images of each other hmm hang about one second hrc 1688 let's go to the other side of this one. Oh, hrc 1688 that is that turned upside down now that's not my problem um i've, I've been forced to look at the manual i'm afraid folks been absolutely forced to do this so let me just set you up here there you go manuals move heat right out of the way move throttle cable out of the way we'll go into that in a second it's another challenge i've got so basically what we've got here that's the bracket five and the reason i thought left hand drive and right hand drive was because it said power support power assisted bracket that bracket there sorry you can't fucking see any of that the reason I thought there was a different bracket here, this bit, was because it says up here, bracket support power assisted steering pipes, that one. Okay, left hand drive, right hand drive, two different part numbers. Oh, rushed out, bought the one that I thought was right hand drive. However, I haven't got this bit here, uh, which is part number four, bracket support power assisted steering pipes. So I'm thinking, what the actual, so, the way it was all set up on the left hand drive car was that we've got this bracket down here i don't know if you can see this let me uh well, let me pause for a moment right good news first um the box once i give it a little bit of a clean up is actually it's an abwest box it's a refurb box brand spanking new i think um, paddocks sell them um so while i thought it was absolutely covered in oil i don't think it is i just think it's covered in crap that came off the engine um that's the good news it's got a nice box which cost me 40 quid um from my uh my, my, my part supplier tim hammond who operates on youtube now um the alternator just ain't gonna fit though it's actually sitting on the top of the box so the alternator is gonna have to be relocated which is a pain however it would appear that there are brackets available although they're somewhat unobtainium to mount the alternator over here. Now we'll be able to do this. Something will happen. We've already got the power on the other side of the box, uh, so the other side of the um, car anyway, because of the second battery. Now, let's next look at this power steering situation we've got here. Which basically needs to sit down. Bolts in the way. Of course the bolt's in the way, Richard. Why did you leave the bolt on? Silly ass. God, I really would wind that one in as well. Right, let's... So, yeah, the power steering pump will not work on this bracket either. So I'm going to have to find myself right hand drive bracket for a VM for both power steering and alternator and that's a bit of a cock up Richard the other challenge by the way that I found um, is, is that while you can get the water pump for a VM engine you can't get just the fucking gasket now I did eventually found it um, from a couple called brick car I've got the part number, you search for it, none of the usual suppliers have it. Land Rover Parts Camp will sell it to me for like 23 quid. Sorry chaps. Um, and I'll buy exactly the same part from Brick Car for I think it's about eight pounds. So that was that. Oh, the other thing was the, uh, the throttle cable. So, oh, where are we? <laughs> On the left-hand drive car, obviously the throttle was over there. 
and the, uh, the accelerator pump and everything is here. So it's a relatively short run for the throttle cable. Um, and it's got the mechanism, which means that the throttle has to go through kind of this, this thing here, this plug hole here. Um, and then it's got the standard fitting onto the top of the, the, the cable. So I was thinking, ah, oh, well, actually, just a V8 one will do, because a V8 one travels pretty much that, that sort of distance. No, they've got the wrong bloody ends on them. Oh, dear. Eventually, I think I found a cable wasser. That's why this is all the unobtainium part. Right, OK, that is the... That's the alternator mounting. We'll see. We will see. Because if I have to make something up like that out of a big lump of girder with some holes drilled in the right places, I could do that. Because I've got this bit. And I've got that bit. So I've got the means whereby I can adjust it. Very irritating though, Richard. Very irritating. So it looks like that bolt and that bolt, those two there, bolts to the engine block. That was for the adjustment, and that was for the second mounting the pivot point. I should be able to manufacture something. This is not the end of the world. Right, okay. It's never the end of the world. Now, when it comes to the alternator bracket, we've got this assembly, this affair here. It doesn't look anything like the one that I've got for the, um, for the alternator. I'll have to have a look. See if the one that's on the car already can be turned around and fit back on again. Now I know it's, it's no good where it is, I might as well take it off. Uh, right, okay, we were talking about accelerating cable. So that, believe it or not, in its entire kind of, what's that, about 24 inches, 60 centimetres if you want, is the throttle cable. That end goes on to the engine, that end goes on to the um, pedal. That's just a fairly standard kind of grommet thing which goes through the, uh, the the pedal box, the, the, the back plate, it's normal kind of gasket fitting, that's all standard stuff, and a pin, okay? And on the other end, it's got this fella, which winds up and down to give you the throttle cable adjustment, on this threaded bit here, and then it's got just that kind of slidey fitting on the end of it. Um, that's the bit I can't find. And also this cable was so close to snapping. <laughs> so I've ordered one. I've ordered one that looks about right. Um, it might need some adapting on the end of it just to make it work properly. We'll see. We're having a bit of a funny day today. Um, so yet another shipment is fucked up. And this one isn't even coming to this address. This one's going to my home address, which has been a thousand times before. So Paddock, so I've ordered a whole ton of parts to get this thing back on four wheels again. Because I need to kind of move it around a little bit to get that one out for an MOT. Um, and uh, yeah, the orders got lost in the system somewhere. Not Paddock's fault. Paddock's have uh, sent it onto FedEx, and FedEx um, they checked it in, but then no one's heard anything since. And my rep at Paddock's is unable to get hold of anyone at FedEx. <sighs> um, I managed to get the handbrake out. Now, what it actually looks like is. On the back end of the gearbox, where it bolts onto the transfer box, which is about there, you see a bolt hole, is that bracket. And that bracket secures the handbrake cable to the side of the gearbox, stops it rattling around, I guess. Um, and I've got a feeling that if I was to move that bracket onto that plunger, and not that one, there'll be enough room on it for it to come out of the other hole. How fucking bizarre is that? So it's not a different, different part number. I tried to order the UK part number um, and before I'd taken it off I was just looking through the systems try, trying to confirm because it's ridiculous I can't believe they've got a different bloody handbrake cable left and right hand right I don't believe they have anyway uh, this is uh, this is an LT77 gearbox so uh, I think reverse is up and to the left um, and uh, yeah it's got a Borg Warner chain drive on the back end of it my man, Mr. Hammond, has promised me one of these gearboxes um, in exchange for me building up a set of carburetors for him. Um, it's come from a relatively low mileage car as well, so I'm quite pleased about that because that might end up in Project Bob. Um, the only thing I need to work out is how I'm going to make it um, a long stick. It's going to need an extension on top of the gearbox here. So that'll need an extension in order to push it all forwards because that's the transfer lever. That's the gear lever gear lever is obviously level with the front of the seats we want the gear lever up here 
the base of the heater. So it looks like we're going to have to, or well, I, I will research what the defenders use on this LT77 gearbox. There'll just be an adapter plate on the top, I would imagine. I've also got transmission covers for it as well. So that might, might just work. Um, now I'm going to have to go and source the, the essential bits that I need to actually get that hub back together. I need a pair of discs, I need all sorts of shit. I might just have to have, assemble it with the old discs and take it all apart again. It's just fucking balls like it really is. Well, I've waited all pissing week for this order. They can just go back on it again. I don't have to connect at the brake calipers. I can just put the hubs back on the system. Um, I was waiting for a bottom swivel pin for that. That was the main thing, I think. I think that was the main thing. Um... If I can get a bottom swivel pin, then that can go together tomorrow morning. I can shift it. Done it. Right, okay. The two bungs that I was talking about, or the two kind of rings, are down there. You see the blue um, loop around the, put that there. That's the blue loop. There's a green loop here. And there's a yellow loop around the handbrake cable right up here somewhere. So. That was the rubber connector that the, uh, the, the T piece ran around, and that was the one I thought it might be. No, no, it was this one right up here, fixed onto the cables, basically part of the moulding. So you can see the brackets back on there. Um, the gearbox cable comes from here and loops right the way around up there and comes back to here. Okay, and then in order to fit it onto a right hand drive car, what is effectively done is it's gone right down behind the uh, behind the transfer box and it's sitting on the shelf there at the back there and that is enough room for it what i did have to do in order to get the cable to come forwards was take out that earth bolt there because i could not get the cable past it on the top of the transmission tunnel but it's there and it works and the only thing i need to do it's blank off the old hole. He's in. Right. We step forwards. Oh, I had a thought, by the way. Uh, I need to look this up. But I had a thought about this different connector I've got over here between the spade connector that was on the old loom um, and the, uh, let's get the light on the matter, and the, the new kind of left-hand loom. The left-hand loom came out of a GA suffix 1990s car, and this is an HA suffix 1991 car. Um, and I am just wondering um, which side of the car the electric fuel pump and system goes down. So I'm going to have to look that up. Electric fuel pump, we should remember that. So we just want to make sure that, uh, obviously we've got the fuel gauge, the fuel pump, we want to make sure they still work when I kind of tear this loom apart. That, that connector that's dangling down over there by the door, that one. Um, yes. We're starting to look a bit more right-hand drive, aren't we? I think so. Well, as you can hear, it's <laughs> busy down out there. You can also see, he's got four wheels back on him and he's moved. That's because this needs to go for an MOT because my sons are coming home from university and that's one of my son's cars. So I'm going to get that MOT, which is the only reason it came up here, really. Um, yeah, although it's got the front wheels on, it's, it's not a huge amount happened behind it. I literally just put the hubs back on the stub axle. Um, the parts order that I was cursing a supplier, sorry, a, cursing a, uh, a courier for uh, that's gone missing is actually the supplier's fault. Sorry, paddocks, you balls up on this one. They're normally really, really very, very good. But basically what they've done is because I get things shipped to different addresses, even though I've put billing and delivery address on the order and they've confirmed they're correct when it came to printing the label out, they've put the wrong postcode on it. So it's gone all the way to Exeter. What fun, what fun. Anyway, um, it is what it is. So I've been unable to fit out the brake discs, I've been unable to fit out the um, swivel pins, I've been unable to fit out the new CV joint, drive shafts are over there still. Uh, so literally I just had to get this car moved so I could I could shift other stuff around the workshop. I just meant putting it 
off the axle stands because that's the stain where it was. That's nothing to do with the powder. Anyway, oh, having done that, I'm now trying to. So it's a huge sniff. I'm trying, still trying to source the alternator and power steering brackets. Um, there's not a huge amount I can do until that does happen. The turbos come back. Midland turbos. It's very nice actually. We'll fit this. It's all in the bag at the moment. It's not very good. Not very good. Same turbo as the one that came off. It's in there and it looks beautiful. So I'm excited about getting that back on the car. Um, I, part of the order is the gasket that goes down here. The gasket that goes up there is actually supplied with the turbo. Along with some other fittings and bits and bobs and stuff. Um, so turbo's back. I haven't really done an awful lot else today. It's been a, a, a kind of a non-billable day because I can't charge a customer for having to loosely assemble a car so I can shift it because the parts supplier balls up on me. But never mind. Uh, what I will do now, I think, because it's so miserable, and I really don't fancy laying down on the concrete, I'm going to get this heating unit stripped down um, and see what it actually needs doing to it. Um, I mean, it's all there, it's all together, but it's very dusty and dirty, and I expect when I get it all open, I will find that the, the foams, etc., inside are not pleasant. Anyway, that's it. Heard healthier. Well, let's take it apart and see what we can find out. It's blowing. There is no resistor on this, so it's only going to blow at one speed. It's getting faster. I don't think this thing's run in a very long time. Right, I think we'll have a look inside it. Um, I shall report back. Sometimes these things are a right bastard to get apart. Um, and this was no exception. Um, and I, the only way I managed to get it done in the end was to loosen all four rivets on the front plate here. So this entire thing then comes out as one one kind of lump, which is, even now it's fighting. Uh, I don't know why, uh, but it, it was sticking on the other side. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, the overall condition inside this thing, apart from it's incredibly filthy and it's making me sneeze, um, is that I think it just needs a good vacuum and I'll put it back together again. Uh, the motor. Well, what can we say about the motor? I think when they squeak, and it's that is very tight. I'll take it out and try lubing it up, but the chances are it's going to be a goner. Um, now to get these motors out, unfortunately, you just have to kind of get a flat blade screwdriver and tap in the inside there. It's useful to remember which way up it goes um, when you are looking at them. Let's get this in position so we can actually see what's going on here. When you are looking at them, there is an indentation on the motor casing and it needs to go against that piece of plastic there, which stops it, you know, walking its way in and walking its way out. It's possible, in fact, you can see the rust there on the end of the, uh, on the end of the shaft for now. Um, we'll, we'll get the motor out and we'll have a look. All of this crap here, by the way, this is all what fell off the heater unit as I was taking it apart, along with very dubious looking uh, bits and bobs so it, oh look at it it's horrible it's going to get a damn good cleaning um i vacuum out and put it back together again um but good news that the foams i think are okay they've not disintegrated they're a different foam material to the um, the metal heater boxes so i think that will survive uh motor however less good uh, Matrix looks okay, but because the thing had no antifreeze in it whatsoever, I will check the flow through on this thing before I put it all back together again. <clears throat> um, I've heard that full fat cola 
does do marvellous things to uh, cleaning these things through. And it's got a fair amount of weight to it. Wouldn't surprise me if it is actually full of sludge. We'll see. We will see. Um, I've had <laughs> problems with the uh, the brick part version, the replacement version of this, where it just kind of you've got these plastic header tanks and an aluminium frame here, and it blew out along here because it just hadn't been clamped tightly enough. And it's all well and good. You think, yeah, that's fine. But when it takes you like you know an hour and a half to get the bloody heater unit back out again, you start to curse the damn thing. But it wasn't even that. I was on the motorway when mine gave up. Um, I just filled the car up with steam. Not very helpful. Anyway, um, I'll get the motor out and then we'll do a diagnosis on that. And in the meantime, I can clean the rest of this uh, casing up, get it ready. So it's all come apart. All of the flaps responded really well, um, to just vacuuming, to be honest. Uh, cleaned everything out, got a paintbrush on it um, and just dusted it really while I was kind of... Uh, 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 vacuuming in the background and it's got the majority of the dust off. Now two concerns I've got. Uh, first and foremost as I mentioned the heater matrix because there's no been no um, antifreeze in this engine certainly wasn't when I took it all apart um, I'm inclined to think this can be bunged up but I'm very reluctant to get rid of a used old stock matrix if it ain't leaking so I'm gonna try the cola trick on that. Uh, second thing is motor. Now this motor I was thinking, do you know what? I'll split it uh, from the, the, the this thing, uh, the, the blower, the, the fan. There you go. And basically, it sits on like that. And all I do is I mount it in a vise and just bang the shaft down, let the motor fall to the floor. Now, already, as soon as it came off, we can see that that joint there has been particularly high resistance. That's the earth um, because it's it just it's melted the solder, um, so it was barely making contact. It also looks like someone's been in here before um, because I can't see that that is kind of factory soldering there. Um, the motor itself is incredibly tight. In fact, it's got a lock point there. It's locking up on me. So I think the motor is past it. I could try lubing all the bearings and stuff up. Um, but for the time it's taken me to get to this point and for the 120 quid a new motor is going to cost, um, it's just churlish, really, to, to, to try and get this thing working, uh, bearing in mind that it's what? An hour and a half, two, well, an hour and a half, probably two hours to get the dash apart and rebuilt, another couple of hours on top of that for the heater unit. So you're talking about four hours, really, to get to this, get to this point and rebuilt. So from that perspective, I think it makes economic sense that as this thing is faulty and is very, very, very tight and probably original to the car, um, that I should just replace it. Now I'll go through that because what you don't want to do is lose all this loom. And I'll show you why when the new part arrives. You have to wait for the next episode on that, I expect. Because although I've ordered it today, um, I suspect it won't be here um, in time for me pushing this video up. So you got to the end of the video. Yeah. It's all right. I'm enjoying the project. I mean, there are ways around 99.999% of the issues I've got here. Um, I have found that <laughs> Brick Car have now refunded me my money because they can't get hold of the bloody water pump gasket either. It is no longer available from Land Rover. So if you've got a VM engine car and you need a water pump gasket, get yourself some gasket paper. That's what I'm going to do. So the list of unobtainium parts is actually growing quite rapidly for the VM. Um, all I can suggest is if you are going to import or you wish to convert a VM from left-hand drive to right-hand drive, then just be aware that you really kind of need a right-hand drive VM donor, which is a pain in the ass. I mean, it's mainly around the bracketry for the steering pump for the alternator. Those are the critical parts. Those are parts that you can't get anywhere else at all. You can't get around those problems. Turbos can be rebuilt, no problems at all. <clears throat> Hoses, Carreras, can largely be made up out of silicon hose, so there's no real issue there. Water pump gaskets, yeah, gasket paper. Um, intercoolers, get it rebuilt. That's all I can suggest. If it's, if, it's, if it's that bad, get the existing unit rebuilt. Radiators, yeah, get them rebuilt. Um, 
I mean, overall, I've got enough bits from a 1991 VM donor um, uh, that, that was a four-door that Tim Hammond uh, was breaking up uh, for parts that I was able to get it sorted out. Now, the engine brackets I wasn't aware I needed at the time, so I didn't ask Mr Hammond to get those off for me, otherwise he would have done. Um, yeah, it's just... I suppose if you've got one... And the, the actual um, end game for this particular car is to go V8 Auto, which is the only way a Range Rover should be, really, especially a 90s Range Rover. It's got to be V8 Auto. Why would it not be V8 Auto? Anyway, if you must go diesel on one of these things and you're looking at a VM two-door car in left-hand drive format, then you should seriously consider just going down the 200 or 300 TDI route. Um... There's way more engines out there. There's very little that you have to change actually on the engine itself um, to fit it into um, the, 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 you know, the Range Rover right-hand drive, left-hand drive format. Um, because the, you know, the ancillaries and so forth, they all stay the same. And it's a shame, really, because the VM is a delightful little engine for a diesel. And I, I, I say that, you know, I'm not a complete petrol head. No, I am. Um, like I say, if you, if you absolutely must go down the VM route, then you're going to need to find yourself a right-hand drive VM donor, specifically for the brackets uh, for the alternator and power steering pump. And there's quite a lot of stuff there. Uh, look in the parts manual. It's completely different left-hand drive and right-hand drive. I'm not joking here. <laughs> completely different. Um, the rest of it, like I say, things like uh, the uh, Speedo, not speeder what are you talking about richard the um uh, throttle cable is different um i've got a part which i've ordered from famous four which is a i think it's a 200 tdi cable i've ordered right hand drive 200 tdi cable and i'm rather hoping that i'm going to be able to adapt it to fit um as you've seen in an earlier episode it might have even been this episode no it was an earlier one uh, the, the the uh the vm throttle cable is different Everything about this thing is different. But, uh, yeah. There is a level of unobtainium-ism on this. Like I say, most problems you can get around, but 